So this was just a quick test to see if we could use a cheap projector lens with the blue flash formula to make an in-camera cyanotype. Now the reason I used blue flash wasn't because I was trying to push that. You could use any kind but this exposure took four hours because I couldn't do it outside. It's very cloudy and like five degrees today so that's creating several issues but the main one is that it was going to take a lot of time regardless because I had to use artificial light even though that light is ultraviolet. So I'm kind of going to quickly go through the setup here. This is just a very crappy camera made with some plywood. Um, I'm not going over the camera construction. It was just, it's junky. It's what I could come up with quickly. Um, but we have a very crappy made camera with a projector lens that is essentially 180 millimeters at f 2.5 which will cover a 5x7 um, I modified a couple 5x7 picture frames one to act as a ground glass to focus and the other one just holds the um, paper the coated paper so that um, you can expose it uh, there's no shutter for this by the way it is just um, red light when I'm trying to get everything to go and then turn the light the UV lights on to take the picture so what you're seeing here is just the simple crappy setup there's an 80 watt UV light UV spotlight LED uh, above it and then uh, that 100 watt 380 nanometer uh, light I use for my enlarger to try to get as much light as possible on it um, I put a cork next to the jar to try to uh, have something to focus for details on but um, you'll see here in a second that that didn't quite work like I expected. <laughs> so all I did was set everything up, turn the uh, regular lights on to focus, make sure everything was good to go on the ground glass, turn the lights off, put a piece of this is Canson XL paper coated with the blue flash, which is just the oxalate. Uh, put it in the camera and then turn the UV lights on and it exposed for four hours. Um, then it was developed with the ferric cyanide. Like the, I have a different video that shows how to do all that. But um, this is the result. Um, it's not perfect, but it's it's usable. Uh, it needs some improvements, though, and I'll go over those. So here is the final image. Again, this is four hours exposure with almost 200 watts of UV artificial light at f 2.5 on a 180 millimeter projector lens. Um, this is the negative version, and this is the inverted version. Now, you'll notice a lot of oddness about it. Um, the first thing is, even though this jug that I took a picture of has some, it's a kind of a Greek replica jug, there is nothing on this image. So I'm assuming that the whatever pigments were used on the jug were not they either I think they absorb UV light essentially is what I'm saying so it just looks like a black jug um, I mean it was going to be monochrome anyway but it's kind of odd that there's nothing on it um, it does look a little fuzzier than I was hoping for because I've taken a picture with this lens using film or I mean uh, paper as film and it actually has some very clear details um, so I'm gonna go over the uh, troubleshooting with this now I think there's a number of issues here if you zoom in you'll notice a kind of a little bit of a blur uh, it is so cold here and the furnace keeps coming on and off that I believe that it's causing everything to move slightly um, from the temperature variations because of how cold it is so that's the first issue um, when you're dealing with something that's an exposure this long um, the other problem is that this is on matte paper, so it's not going to be very clear. So, if you were wanting to make this look crisp and clear and 
and better. A, you would be doing this in bright sunny day, daylight everywhere. B, you would do this on uh, a um, oh a photo like a perfectly smooth paper, the glossy photo paper, which you can do with this. Um, so that would be the second thing, and. You also, if you, if you do all that, then you're not worried about uh, the temperature affecting it movement because you're not going to have it exposed for near as long with that formula. So there's just a couple things to keep in mind, and uh, I just kind of wanted to try it out and see how it worked. And I might revisit it some other time, but not during the winter months. <laughs> I might try it again during the summer when it's nice and bright, but... Uh, there's just a quick and dirty video of a test on this, and I'll see you in the next one.